How's everyone's uh, month been so far? Very monthly. It's going by really fast. February felt like it was just dragging along, and then March hit, and it's just been moving lightning quick. Can you believe we have SL20B right around the corner? 20 years. Incredible. We're still here. Still rolling out improvements. Uh, when will you be opening the applications for general, you know, presenters? Soonish. Yeah, th that he news hits the uh, featured news blog as soon as it's made available. Yeah, I don't have that date, unfortunately, but soonish. But uh, the applications for Music Fest and general performers is open. Let me see when that. Um, let me go ahead and paste this link here. Uh, former application closed March 14th. However, Music Fest auditions um, form is open until April 9th. I would say juggling counts as performance. <laughs> Say most of the performers that come up are, are you know, DJs and, and live musicians. But uh, mm -hmm. I, I personally would think that would be great to have uh, something else. Yeah, absolutely. Why not? Low variety. I love jugglers. Let's see what's possible. Juggle a memory print though. A memory print. <laughs> well, while we're on the topic of uh, SL20, uh, and uh, we have announced it, um, the theme this year is Our Fantastic Future. And like every year, we want everyone to come out and celebrate. Uh, the event will be held over 20 days from June 22nd to July 11th, and will feature many of the things that you've come to expect and enjoy in the past, such as the Shop and Hop. Uh, community event and a music fest. I'm sure there will probably be more. Uh, we're starting to release the application forms as we just talked about. Uh, music fest and performance, although performer is closed. Um, so if you're a performer, um, the link is in the featured uh, thing, but just in case, I'll just drop the link here. Why not? An event for performer. I enjoy links. Other applications will be coming soon, including those for exhibitors, volunteers, and merchants. So you want to follow our featured news blog. And right now, for more information, uh, I think I already put this up. Yes, yes. So more information, uh, go ahead and look up the link I posted, posted earlier. Um, and keep it uh, locked on the featured news page. Uh, we're going to be rolling out more news as it becomes readily available. I'm not sure as far as specific start times. Uh, we do announce those when we announce usually the news of Shop and Hop. Yeah, I would say most likely. But uh, to be specific, we'll, we'll know as soon as it's uh, made available. Oh, you absolutely must, Sassy. You must, you must, you must. Indeed, it is you a missed grand it celebration. Year. Yeah, they're always a, a great amount of fun. And it's really exciting 
to see everything out there in the uh, the community area and see every community kind of bring their own certain part of Second Life to the table. It's really exciting to see that. I was going to uh, bring up a couple things that uh, we're working on. Um, some of you probably have already heard of, but uh, we've recently spotlighted some of our current big projects in the works. Um, and this will excite Adam, I know, uh, the mobile viewer. Um, it's one of the big ones that we're working on right now. Um, you can see a first look video of that right there. Um, and the focus here is really to, to give a, a full featured uh, Second Life viewer, uh, including avatars and the world itself, and for both iOS and Android devices right out of the gate. Um, it's a pretty ambitious project, but I think the early results really do speak for themselves. Um, there's no ETA yet, of course, for it, but it's going to be the focus of the team for a while yet. I think that it's going to be really cool. Um, also, work is continuing on some other newness, um, such as the Physically Based Rendering Project, or PBR, um, which adds uh, a whole new dimension to lighting and materials in Second Life, um, which I will say that everyone does look wonderful right now in that viewer. Um, and we talked about a bit last month. Uh, I definitely invite you to head to the blog, check out some more information on the PBR viewer. Uh, yes, there's another video right over here. Um, if you want to play with it, uh, you can play with it today. Uh, you can do that right now on the beta grid. Uh, first, you'll want to grab the viewer for it, which I will note that you can use that viewer um, on the main grid. You just can't use all the tools that come with it. So you will still see some of the effects of it, even if you're using it on a DD. Um, you just can't play with the materials directly. Um, once you have it loaded, uh, you log into the beta grid, and you can create and view materials, do all the, all the stuff with it. There's a couple of regions that we have set up for that, which are... Those ones there. And uh, also, just as a note, if you've never logged into the beta grid before, or you haven't in the last year or so, um, Feel free to provide uh, file a support ticket and uh, contact us in live chat. We'll be able to copy your account over as soon as we can and get you all set up to be on the beta grid and just test that out. Trying to get to the request as quickly as we can to get you in there so you don't have to wait. So even though you're submitting a ticket, we are looking at those a uh, few times a day. Get you in there. Well, Christina, one of the biggest advantages is you're free to break stuff. You're free to test it out. Uh, and there's no cost to you. Um, your account will be given a uh, nightly replenishment of linens, so you can upload articles to the beta grid, test them out, uh, do what you need to do with them before um, you're ready to you take it to the uh, live grid where it does cost for uploads. I think that's one of the big things. Um, and just kind of, uh, you know, working with things in a kind of like an, uh, error film, but also consequence of the environment. Uh, when you log into the uh, beta grid, you will be given a copy of your inventory. So you can make any changes, adjustments, builds uh, as necessary, uh, really to no consequence to your main grid. And um, that is uh, when it's working as expected. It is uh, synced nightly. But just in case you notice that it has been syncing, you can just go ahead and submit a new ticket and we'll get that synced to you as well. Yeah, it's also worth noting that uh, much like PBR and uh, other projects like puppetry and so forth, the code for those is right now only on the beta grid. 
uh, for full and full use of them. So you really do have to use it if you want to try out the latest, greatest um, and play with those. And even test your current content um, to make sure that they look great um, in PBR. Uh, if they work correctly, um, highly recommend. Janet, we don't have any um, compatibility confirmations yet as far as mobile viewer and PBR because both are, well, um, PBR is uh, still in testing, obviously. Mobile viewer is still, uh, uh, I would say, in works or, you know, uh, under maintenance or in progress, yeah, pre-alpha. Um, so as those become closer to release, um, developers are satisfied where it is and they're they're happy to release the, the specs. Uh, we'll be the, you know, we'll definitely be sharing that. And I would also add that um, the goal certainly with uh, the mobile viewer is that everything that works on the desktop viewer works on the mobile viewer. So I would imagine, obviously no yeah. confirmation, but imagine that PPR, because that's where, where graphics are going, that that would obviously also work there. Yeah, PBR is definitely the, the future we're envisioning. Uh, it, it's really going to just add a, a next level of depth uh, for anyone who hasn't tested it on the beta grid. Um, I always like looking at my own motorcycles and looking at the Chrome. It's just, it just hits you. that You can actually see reflections coming off of it. Um, it it's really cool. It is really cool, and uh, it's just going to be a new level of uh, immersion. Another way of looking at it is, you know, when you look at different uh, games and whatnot that you've played, the games that are new right now all look amazing and they stay amazing in your head. But then when the new thing comes out, you look back and go, oh, that wasn't all that good. That's what <laughs> yeah, this makes our that. current stuff look. <laughs> you know, you see this new stuff and you're like, oh, wow, this is what I was missing. It just adds a whole nother level to it. Yeah, there's often been times where we've gone through a change uh, deep and, and well before that wind light and the introduction of mesh and so forth, where you get to step back and go, wow, this is nothing like what I remember Second Life looking like. This is so different and new. And really, PBRs very much will give you that feeling uh, when you really look at it in all its glory that this this doesn't look like your grandfather's Second Life. Um, <laughs> You'll be able to go, back in my day, we didn't have this fancy, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, I just said all of that with my speaker off. Oh, my God. <laughs> I remember my first time using voice. Uh, Proper <laughs> operation, Vix. The O-N-O-F-F switch must be in the O-N position. Right. <laughs> uh, for anyone who hasn't um, explored PBR yet, um, I posted a link, and uh, I encourage you to read uh, just the first part, the what is it and why it's used. Uh, and you're going to gain a, a full understanding of why we're so excited uh, for its release. It's really going to change uh, everything that you've seen. Lexo, I honestly have not paid attention to water uh, with uh, relation to PBR, but it's something I will definitely look into. I mean, it's an obvious thing, so I totally understand your question, um, but I've been looking at the effects of light and whatnot on different surfaces inside rooms and stuff like that, so that's just where I was fixated, but I'll keep an eye out. Yeah, disco balls are going to be just amazing. I, I can't wait. <laughs> just I've a little neon testing. sign in yeah. a room <laughs> and how it affects. Yeah. Uh, ambience in a room, yeah. You, you, the wherever you can imagine light reflecting off light or or anything related to that is is going to be an upgrade. Real it makes you realize just how much you've missed real shadows. That is right. Yeah, like you, you live so long without this facet, and when it's here, it's like I, I just can't go back.
That's an interesting question, Eric. Um, I'm really not sure. Uh, I know that there is, has been discussion about working on the uh, uh, mainline default lighting uh, under EEP. Um, what do you guys think? As far as new news, I haven't heard of any yet. Wendy, was that so? What do you guys think for everybody or for me and Vix? You and Vix. Oh, I think um, that might be Jira worthy at the very least. It sounds like a great uh, possibility, yeah, that's but that's as with that's everything that's else, ninety-eight percent will be like, "Oh my god, this is so wonderful," and two percent will be like, "Oh my god, this ruined Second Life for me." And <laughs> Second Life. It's truly the end of Second Life. M, that 2% is very squeaky. Uh, anyone in the uh, fantasy role playing, the Gore community, you're going to love your plate armor. Just saying. Oh, metal looks so good. Existing maps are yeah. affected by the new PBR um, because otherwise things would just look so bad until everybody adjusts everything. So no adjustments necessary, but then to really get the full effect out of it, that would need adjustments. You'll find yourself raising out items that you know probably have reflections. You're like, oh my god, this is so different now. Oh, yeah, you'd be like, well, I wonder what this looks like. I wonder what this looks like. You're going to go through your whole inventory again, <laughs> checking out everything new. Yeah, it'll probably have the same effect as baked on mesh. Yeah. So moving along, we have another feature, uh, well, a feature to announce. If the link will post for me. This was called Scripted Agent Access Flag. Uh, right now on the RC channels, uh, specifically, uh, where is it, Blue Steel and La Tigra. Um, this will give private region owners the, uh, ch the chance to uh, manage um, how scripted agents or bots are uh, able to access your region. So the link I posted above is a uh, quick and dirty, uh, frequently asked question that will go into um, how this tool is ranged right now, um, how you can use it. Um, and if you have a private region and um, you don't like bots or you kind of like some flexibility when it comes to scripted agents visiting your region, um, this is a, a worthy feature of trying. Um, and if you haven't been put on the RC channel because it is still in the testing phase, um, go ahead and uh, reach out to support and um, we'll go ahead and get you over there for uh, testing. And just to let you know, because it's testing, um, you might see a bug or two. Um, it's not been pushed out to the main channel yet. Um, but it's definitely uh, something that's out there and uh, ready for you to get your hands on. Vix, it doesn't sound like they really liked it. Maybe we should go ahead and uh, not actually release Is it. it off? All right. Yeah, I'm just letting it. We try. <laughs> So the tag is called deny underscore bots. Um, when deny bots is on, all scripted agents that are not explicitly listed on the estate's allowed access list will be denied. Uh, scripted agents that have state manager privileges for an estate will also be able to access regions inside the estate, regardless of the estate's deny bots setting. Uh, when the deny bots is off, 
Um, all scripted agents are treated the same, just as any other avatar with uh, public access checked. And this is really a prelude to us looking at the possibilities of doing other things for control over bot access and stuff like that. So keep an eye out. You're welcome, Serena. Sassy, not as yet, but it's definitely something that you can submit a feature request for. Pantera, not as yet because the mobile is still uh, something that we're working on. But as it st starts coming closer to actually, like once it's on like a beta viewer type or whatever, that would definitely be a, a feature request to put in there. And I don't think it's an unreasonable request uh, because they may behave differently in this way, you know. So it's just definitely something to keep as a possibility. And what I saw with the mobile viewer was definitely limited in what you could do because it's not nowhere near built yet. Um, but the big deal that they wanted to get across to us was that it looked just like Second Life. It wasn't like some 8-bit yes. version of Second Life that you were looking at. It was real Second Life. Not all the functionality was built in yet. And I don't know if all functionality will be built into it. I personally wouldn't want to be editing an object or uh, writing script in a mobile viewer, but right now the look was just wonderful. So you can at least count on um, most likely that being it too. Yes, I think that'd be a big emphasis, uh, especially with uh, uh, how phones are, the, the speeds and the processing powers and the memory these days um, getting uh, the mobile viewer, you know, almost maybe not, not in line with desktop, but very close, as close as we, as we can get it, I think would be huge. Indeed, Pantera, there will probably be a case of having to say control P on desktop and whatever, you know, wherever the location is will be on mobile. Um, oh, I'll be honest. There will be a new, new, new way to find it. And Wendy, for a while, there'll be a translation period of, can you log into the main viewer and let's test and see if it's a problem there first? Right, of course. Yeah, you know, right now start. we still translate from, from Mac to PC, so. What's a Mac? <laughs> the thing <laughs> sitting on my desk, Izzy. Oh, I thought you had a computer. We'll talk later, Izzy. Behind the <laughs> I'm going to hide now. <laughs> I want to go to the doghouse. Gorgeous, I can go and uh, answer your question. Uh, we don't have any information uh, regarding uh, any change with uh, Speedlight once the mobile viewer. It, it's still very new, um, but if, if any information comes around, along that we can share, uh, we'll definitely be uh, placing here. 
I have a question. This has, sure, something, to do, it. has something to do with my sim. Okay. All right. You banned people off your sim. Okay. Now, hear me out on this one. They're not supposed to get there, correct? Through ban lines, no nothing. Even if you kick them off your sim, correct? Correct. How can they get on your sim through the ban lines? First off, make sure that they're region banned rather than parcel banned. It's region banned, yes. They've been banned for about four years. Are there adjacent regions? No. And when they come in, it's question mark, question mark, question mark, dot, question mark, question mark, question mark. AR them for suspecting they're using a third-party viewer. Yeah, and we did that, exactly. and I haven't heard nothing back from anybody on what they're going to do. No, they're not ghosted. They merely come in there and harass. And at me, that I own the sim, I cannot even, even eject them out of the sim. So even if you do a restart, uh, they're still there? No, they're gone if you do a restart. Oh, but they come back? But they come back through the band lines yet again. Okay. Now, Izzy's familiar with my sim. It's, been, it's just one of the oldest ones in SL. And it's, uh, you know, granted, uh, there has been some problems with it. And we know what the problems are, but they should be still access. And then I'm getting tired of these. They, somebody needs to do something about this angel and demons group. They like to come in the sim and harass people, too. I mean, I'm just getting tired of it. I go to concierge. They are them, do this, do that, and they still continue to do it. Now, what do I do? Uh, well, I think you're, 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 you're doing the right thing with the abuse report. Um, and if it's continual harassment, um, uh, send in the report and if you need to. Um, I mean, you can send us a quick note, and uh, you know, we'll, we'll toss up a flare on your behalf. Um, but, yeah, uh, sending send in the report in, uh, specifying the region, um, and if you have any of the names, any new information, um, will be helpful. Um, fortunately, we can't comment on what happens after the reporting process. Uh, it is a frustrating uh, situation to deal with, uh, but we'll do our best to help facilitate the, uh, the reporting. But also, uh, you know, if their name is showing up as all question marks, they may just be making a new alt and going in there under the new alt, too. Yeah, it's question mark, question mark, question mark, dot, question mark, question mark. And, I mean, I can't keep on re resetting that sim every two hours or every 10 right. seconds. Right. No, I understand that. What I'm saying, though, is most likely they're spoofing their IP. They're using a third-party viewer to hide their um, actual avatar name. And they're making new avatars to get around your ban. So that's a difficult technical situation that governance would need to know all the information that you can on it so that way they can help provide uh, a report to our engineers to help block that kind of a situation. But what I'm always suggesting, and I get resistance every time I suggest it until somebody actually takes me up on it, is if you have to, restrict public access to the region for a few hours. Usually the abusers will find somewhere else to play. Right, and we even set screenshots to the abuse team. But remember, and if they're just seeing question mark, question mark, question mark as the name, it's hard for them to track it too. And they ha and we also sent them the key to that. I was a a able to I am that person. And in a few, I says, get the blank, blank, blank off my sim now, because I am really getting blank, blank, blank at you. And so I have conversed with this person in the past, and it's this, and they talk to me. No, it's not. So I'm assuming you're like right clicking on them and I aming them. Yep. So in your the next time that happens, do the right click and I am them. And in your abuse report, specifically put the line of text uh, that you IM'd, so that way they can use that to track the uh, individual. Okay, because I did give them the guys, though. I gave them the key of the avatar and everything. But if they didn't think about the fact that they could go into the chat log to find the individual, and I mean, granted, they should, but I'm just trying to give you the better information to hopefully get the right response. 
Okay. The hard part about governance is just how many reports they get. So they're trying to work very, very quickly. That's not an excuse. Right. It's just a reality. Can I can I deform them on my sim and let them the next time they log in, wherever they go, they're gonna be at corner to corner. <laughs> I'm. You heard me I, say it. <laughs> I don't know how to respond to that. <laughs> because it's getting. No, I'm being honest. Is he's getting to that point that I rather see their head on one corner of the sim, their legs at the other corner, their ass underneath the sim, you know, and the boob on the left hand side. The right boob on the other side, because I'm, I'm just getting tired of it. At so you this give point. them an object that says, "Will you let me animate you?" and then have fun. But then I'll get into trouble, right? Right. That's yeah, always a possibility. Your region. Uh, Chipmunk, question: Are you are filing the abuse reports? Uh, just in case we you know, send a tip, governance way, like, "Hey, this report is." Uh, four, four people sent it. Okay, I would also make sure you're sending that way. You know, absolutely. Uh, reports being sent in with all the necessary information just to have all the uh, bases covered. Right. And also, it's harder when we, it's hard for us to uh, tell governance, hey, can you search these different people that submitted abuse reports? Whereas if we can say each time this happens, Chipmunk is submitting the abuse report and including this, this, and this, that's easier for them to collate and build a plan on and take further right. action. Okay. You have to play to an engineering kind of a mind in that respect. Uh, well, to now get I've it got escalated. Well, me as a sim owner, I report. I have my estate managers report it because this is they were all present when this happened. Uh, they called me up at three o'clock in the morning to come. And another incident was at three in the morning. I'm in bed. They call my house. You need to get into SO because we can't eject them. You have to do something. And they have all the privileges to do it except for restart my sim. So I'm just, I'm just getting kind of frustrated. Jim, I would say, uh, uh, because we, we do have a few more topics for land to cover, um, if you need, if you have more further questions regarding how to file a abuse report or what kind of information to gather, uh, you can reach out to us and we'll help facilitate the report for you. Okie dokie. Well, I mean, we can discuss that, honey, but I want to actually reframe a bit at this point because this is the land and concierge meeting, not the governance meeting. So we really can't go into a lot of specifics on governance. We can help point you to them, but we really can't. We don't set that policy. <coughs> um, we don't share that. We are not where we are, unfortunately. Um, probably a good idea, actually. <laughs> you wouldn't want me to be handling those issues. <laughs> No, I wanted to know what to do because, the, you know, I just wanted to know. Oh, we understand. Do. Yeah, it is frustrating. Yeah. Um, uh, but we'll we'll help the, the best we can to facilitate the report, make sure you're capturing everything you need to capture so governance has all that they need uh, to look into it properly. And uh, if so, you can always reach out to us. Uh, you know, go through your, your dashboard and uh, you'll have a, a couple ways to get a hold of us. Okay. Go ahead, Sassy. Yeah, go for it, Sassy. We'll try. We'll give it a swing. Why is hair an accessory? Well, that sounds almost like the start of a pun or something. Or <laughs> um, I get what I you mean, but yeah. Yeah, I, I would believe say it's... because it's an attachment, it's also yeah. considered an object, so thereby... Uh, just when we're touching, like, you know, feet. Yeah, or like Zach feet. said, I think it's being viewed as a wig. However, that would also be a really good question for the web user group. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I <I'm gonna> love it. <laughs> we're dissecting the grammar of Second Life. My avatar came with hair, but sometimes I will wear, I don't want to say a wig, maybe it's a wig. But it, it's an extra uh, thing of hair. It's called Joseph hair. Uh, I'll put on sometimes with the matching beard. It probably looks storky. 
You were wearing it the first time I met you, Vix. It's always how I feel. Oh, yeah, you remember. <laughs> I live vicariously through my avatar. <laughs> I just wear fancy hats, so. Well, I just introduced. Go ahead. Oh, sorry, Wendy. Uh, we did mention we have a few more topics, and I see uh, the hourglass on our uh, user group is uh, slowly trickling. Um, we will, I did want to mention that support is uh, seeing uh, uptick in uh, events posting issues. Uh, if some of you may have come across it, uh, we are well aware of a few errors right now percolating through the system, and uh, we're sending them up to the engineers with any and all information that we have uh, so they can... Uh, begin work on a fix so um, if you are seeing any errors that you probably weren't previously um, reach out to us and we'll do our best to help you know troubleshoot um, if we can to uh, help mitigate on your end uh, if not we'll gather that information and include it in the bug reports uh, that we have working most of the issues we see are kind of uh, around reoccurring events Although there have been a few as far as single events, but reoccurring events uh, kind of seems to be the uh, the core issue right now that we're seeing. And yeah, I would also add just on Marketplace that they are doing some changes right now. Um, and their changes are continuing, so ongoing work. And uh, while well, look at that, I segued for me because I want to talk about, you know, we are doing a lot of work right now, and we also just, amongst other things, we also uh, recently announced some price changes. Um, I want to make bring those up. Uh, first off, of course, those who own a full estate region or a 30k region, uh, you've seen your monthly maintenance lower by $20. Um, we also are running a beta program, program right now that has uh, gained some interest uh, where we're uh, testing, allowing people to pay their monthly maintenance in Linden dollars. Um, we also um, uh, had some changes to buy and sell fees on the Lindex. Uh, you can see a full breakdown of all of these changes, as well as an FAQ, some more information, at this web link right here. Indeed, Teresa, I think yours is still thirty dollars cheaper, though. So, I don't know, Mel. I know that everything is still being looked at and there may be changes down the line, but there's nothing that I could promise. Did mainland go down on price too? Only full estate regions. I'm going to have to go back. Yeah, if you notice, over the past several years, we usually do one, then while we're looking at the other for a while, and then make a change there, and then go back. So we usually only make a change on private or mainland at one particular point in time. Yeah, we tend to look at it very cautiously. And gorgeous, like uh, Wendy said, we don't have any other information just yet. <laughs> and Vic's saying at the same time. Honey, yeah, we have been looking at that. Um, there may be something in the future on that, uh, hopefully. Um, those regions do still exist, but they're not currently taking new locations. Uh, but we might we might eventually look at that again. I know it's something that's very dear to my heart, and I, I often champion it, so it's not forgotten. Sassy, if I may uh, touch on your question, because it is a good question. Um, we had recently just kind of introduced uh, homestead ownership um, as part of the Premium Plus um, without the requirement of owning a full region. Um, we, we are, uh, you know, we definitely like any feedback or suggestions 
on uh, how the program is running or you know what can be moved forward um, so if you do have an idea I would say that would be more of an idea and a suggestion that would go through the feature request because we do have a team that will review that um, so that would be the best place to send that so it gets to the right people to look at We need more prims on a 30k sim. Definitely feature request. <laughs> you There's more? never enough prims. I don't have enough. I don't have enough prims. You, you maxed out your 30k. Yes. Wow. How's the region old enough though? Uh, no lag. A little lag. That's not too bad. And my my mainland. My six parcels I got on mainland, that, that not enough room. Can you up those? Can we pay to up those to more prim, or how does that work on mainland? Not right at the moment. Mainland is affixed. Oh, okay. I'm just going to have to go buy another sim then to get more prims. <laughs> the suggestion is spring clean, but you know what? We'll help you get another region. <laughs> You know, going through, uh, though, um, if you don't want to incur any more of a budget, uh, going through um, your objects that um, maybe you haven't been touched in a while, it might be a good chance to uh, pick up some. Um, we could, if, especially if you have a couple new builds in mind you want to put down, uh, just picking up stuff, putting it back in your inventory for a later time. Um, you know, spring cleaning, it's not uh, too bad of an idea. You sure got a lot of burn holes in this. Teresa, I don't know. Um, they will probably also be able to be requested, but I honestly don't know at this point. It's going to depend on how popular they are, I imagine, because chances are they'll go pretty quickly, so we might have to do something like that. Alicia, I'm, guess, I'm assuming your question um, was related to if you need to leave a certain number of prims open on the region for performance-related uh, Um I wouldn't say so. Um, you're free to use the prims. Um, now, uh, working, you know, in the support and, and um, doing uh, region performance reviews, um, I, I've seen regions that only had a quarter of the prims uh, taken that have completely lagged, and then I've seen uh, regions that are near max uh, working admirably. I think it's really, you know, how um, you're using the prims. Uh, more importantly, how many scripts are down. Um, if those scripts are in movable objects, are they colliding? You know, um, do you have any temp resors like uh, snow emitters, rain emitters, things of that nature? So it's really about the type of uh, prims that you have going on in the region. Thanks for coming. No, no, that was well written. Let me go ahead and uh, finish it. <laughs> uh, Izzy or Wendy, if you've already finished it, feel free to jump in. Uh, so, Lita, that would probably fall into a, a governance question uh, in the form of an abuse report. Um, we're not privy to uh, that type of uh, information here. Um, so, the best I can recommend is to uh, follow an abuse report. If you not, have not, 
um, reach out to us and uh, we'll guide you through how to send it and uh, what kind of information you want to include. Right. We can give you information on how to better lock down the access, but right. if you want to keep it open and are having trouble because people are abusing that, that's more of a governance side. There are some estate tools uh, at your disposal that you can do to kind of limit uh, that kind of traffic, like, for example, uh, marking payment information on file or payment method on file, um, changing it to just maybe a group access uh, or allowed access, uh, things like that. Uh, we can kind of uh, show you if you want to keep it public access and just kind of um, mitigate the riffraff, then uh, we would guide you on how to file an abuse report. Right, the uh, payment method option might snag people who, as you mentioned, don't have one either, but are just there to visit in a friendly manner. Right, because very rarely does a griefer want to give us their payment information so we can identify them. Got some marshmallows if you want to use them. It'll fill up your sim and lock it down. This is from 15 years ago, though. SLB 20 is going to be great for fair. M, basically, it depends upon what you want to actually have access your region. Um, if you... Um, are selling things or doing things within your home in real life and you leave everything open and just put a, you know, do not uh, disturb or no uh, trespassing sign, criminals can go ahead and do things. So it's all about controlling the access uh, a little bit better to then prevent people that you don't want to go there from accessing. We have one more topic uh, to squeeze in before we reach the end, and that is uh, last names. We've had a large number of new last names in the past couple of weeks, and let me go ahead and drop in who they are. And you can view this list currently right here. Sausage, really? Sausage? I love that name. <laughs> Chipmunk Sausage. There we if go. If you know a name we haven't come up with, we have a suggestion portal. Chipmunk. I can't unsee that now. Thank you. <laughs> Spicy Sausage. <laughs> Let's go. What's well, better than I'm Young? I'm telling you. Is it the Elsbeth? Remember the last thing? time Daddy, That's so. too original not to be right. And the George, uh, George Costanza's already been taken, so. I'm getting tired of them saying, are you Chinese? Okay. Someone better try spicy sausage. <laughs> hey, that's another one. I'll make me an alt spicy sausage. Thank you, Vix. Uh, what's hey, going on? Oh, sorry. Uh, just going to answer a gorgeous question. Uh, it is a service, uh, uh, but although there is a charge if you want to revert to a previous name, um, the good thing is embedded in the system. Uh, once you choose a name, um, and let's say you choose another, the previous combination uh, is made available to you. So we reserve that, especially let's say if you have your original name, uh, you, you take a leap and choose a new name, your original name is still linked to your account and that does not become available. But while there is a service fee, uh, you can just rest assured that if you change your mind and you want to go back, um, your previous iteration it, it will still be uh, there waiting for you. All right. What's going on with the friends list? You mean 
the uh, display issue that we have a blog open right now for? Oh, there is a blog uh, where um, your friends disappear? Yes, uh, we are aware, and uh, oh, okay. we are maintaining a, uh, a blog to that regard. It's something that we've seen reoccurring enough that we put it out there for everyone to know. Um, the engineers are actively working on it, and uh, we are maintaining the blog. And, uh, the last update was uh, seven days ago, just to let everyone know uh, that we're still aware and uh, we're still actively uh, pursuing a fix. Oh, I have a question. Um, is it possible to update to Premium Plus and then go back to Premium? Absolutely. Actually, when you go to Absolutely. downgrade, it'll actually ask you if you want to downgrade back to a base account or if you want to downgrade back to Premium. So you can go back from Premium Plus to Premium without ever having to go through base again. Even if you're annual? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Absolutely. I, I will say they really looked into all the different permutations. Because I find it cheaper to upgrade to premium to change your name and then downgrade back. I mean, upgrade to premium plus, change the name, and downgrade back to premium would be cheaper than paying for the name change as premium. I have never heard that ever, ever, ever. Really? That was sarcasm. Okay. <laughs> Your nose is growing. <laughs> you guys did that on purpose because the Premium Plus becomes so attractive, it's hard to downgrade, right? Oh, we I'll want new plus. options to, you know, be attractive and give lots and lots of value. The hope is that when we make something new, it becomes so valuable to you that you want to stay at it because then that means we're doing a good job. Well, my main's already premium plus. I don't want to have an alt that's premium plus too. That's too expensive. Oh, I get that. And also for people that are private island owners, a lot of times they'll have their private island uh, owner not be premium, but then have their alt be premium plus because as an island owner, you get concierge level uh, uh, support and stuff anyway. So there's a lot of different ways to play with it. And I've had people that have written in tickets wanting to downgrade. Um, actually, I just had somebody who wanted to downgrade from our uh, paying for their island in Linden dollars, apologizing to me that they just, you know, didn't like it or whatever. And it's like, if it doesn't work for you, we're not going to penalize you for wanting to downgrade. It's just if, if the system works for you, great, you go for it. If it doesn't, that's totally fine. Oh, as Chipmunk can tell, I'm a softie. You, you and <clears throat> see, you and Ethan, uh, we're softies. I still chat with Ethan occasionally. Oh, you do, Lexo. You did bring up a good point. Um, we did have. I, I'm not sure um, if it's still under maintenance, um, but we did have a. Um, premium access benefit for for regions. So we, we did have that. Um, from my understanding, it wasn't working as fully intended. There was maybe a few bugs that we were ironing out. Um, I haven't looked at it in a while, so it might still be in that phase. But yeah, we, we recognized, um, you know, given a little bit of a benefit to premium members um, in teleporting the regions that may be near incapacity uh, could be value added. When did you just call Izzy a her? happens all the time. I've also got been called Lizzie all the time. Like, where's the L? Uh, okay. 
I kind of view that the same way as I view holidays. You know, say whatever happy holiday that you want to say for. I understand what the intention is. Use whatever pronoun you want to use when addressing me. I understand the intention. That wasn't to you, though, Adam. Don't even try to twist it. Um, I have to throw that into the, as a disclaimer on everything I say now. Blah, 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 blah. Not you, Adam. Oh, you like the physical journey. It's not like so. Oh, me too. Be creative, um, yes, definitely future yeah. request on that. Sorry, Vix, I didn't mean to cut you off there. Oh, oh, oh it's fine, no worries about it. I'm just trying to get a squeeze in an answer here before uh, we finish. Um, so, Lexa, were you thinking that um, you would kind of have, like, a benefit if you went to a higher tier where uh, vehicle crossing would be uh, prioritized, granted? I'm just kind of trying to follow your uh, your idea. Me too, Em. Thanks for stopping by. We'll see you next month. We have a few minutes here. We'll try to answer any uh, questions we have. Oh, okay. It's an interesting thought, Lexo. I know we've mentioned it a few times here, but if you haven't uh, filled out a feature request, uh, we'd love to walk you through it. Um, I, I think this meeting, you guys have been bringing some really great ideas um, that are going to make our review team busy. They're going to love us for it. Zach, you can just say beam me up. We need more group space. We don't have enough. Feature request. Is there ever enough? No. Back in my day, we only got 20 groups. Those were the days, yep. I want to say I came in around 13, somewhere in there. It was, it was tiny. Well, in 2013, it was 40. I think. Wendy, you that old? Well, that's our time, everyone. We're going right up against it. I love it. This is a very good uh, meeting. Thank you, everybody, for your questions and your engagement. And uh, we will uh, see you next month. Just take care, all. Thanks for being here. Have a great one, everybody. Bye, Izzy.